We're the Kerr Boxes and you're watching Stand Up Magazine. Well, that's it guys, we are back at Kepuhi Beach. We are back on Molokai, first crossing since 2019. And I'm so stoked to be here. I can feel the energy. There is so much new stuff going on. Uh, now we have wings out there practicing. The foiling is taking off. SUP, I see actually more SUPs than I thought because you know what? Even if it's not as competitive as it used to be, it is still a thing. And conquering this channel on a SOP is still a huge bucket list item. It is an accomplishment. We're gonna take you guys across this channel and see what's going on. Foiling is the progression and uh, 2018, 2019, it was uh, just a few guys and now boom, here they are. Everybody's here. Yeah. What do you make of that? Oh, it's just rad. I mean, never did I think that there'd be this big of a division because in the beginning, downwind foiling was pretty hard to do. Mm -hmm. And now that the equipment's improved so much, the boards have gotten longer again and it's made it vastly easier to get up on foil. Now there's like a bigger turnout and it's really good. I, I think for the sport to go to the next level, you need a ton of interest from mm -hmm. plenty of places. And I think it's gonna make for the most exciting race in this event's history. Is this new subfoiling thing like SUP was maybe when it was 2010? Oh, totally. Like when, I mean, SUP started in this event, it was like only a handful of people, then it exploded and yeah. there was hundreds of people. Um, foiling is, I wouldn't say quite to the hundreds yet, but I mean, this is gonna be the most competitive year and there's tons of people doing it. And what I love most about this race growing up is there are those that are trying to win the whole thing. They're trying to break records, but competitively, everyone's fighting their own battles, even if it's for divisions yeah. or it's sort yes. of, who you end up finding out in mm -hmm. the channel where you're like, I just want to beat that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's pretty cool. Um, and that's what makes this, this event special too, because it's more about being a finisher than yeah. it is like, oh, I didn't win. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I think, what draws a lot of people across mm -hmm. the different disciplines. But with foiling, it's changed this event from being an endurance race into a sprint. Yes, this is, yeah. with the foiling, we're actually sprinting across as fast as possible yeah. well in the first early days i used to go relay with my cousin dave kalama for the first three crossings and i'm um, actually i'm supporting my friend kevin horgan who's always gone solo it's his 15th crossing wow solo stand up so he's actually riding my board and um i'm gonna be coaching him across we were the first ones with a steering system on the boards a uh -huh. lot of people had fixed fins and at the end of the race, I saw that their bodies were lopsided. One side was swollen. Their, their downwind side, the left-handed side, was a lot bigger than their right-handed side because <laughs> there was like 10 to 1 ratio on the amount of strokes that they could take. It is race day here. The M2O is back and so are the memories. Super stoked to be here. Are you super stoked to be here? I'm psyched. So psyched. Behind us, everybody is lining up on the beach for the pule and one thing that is changing and we were talking about a little bit about the, the changes is now we have a start the focus start now is at 9 30 that means no hectic after the pulley finding the boat running out or at least i don't have to and the foilers don't have to i think some of the guys up in the condos the foilers they were still sleeping here we are 2023 and uh looks Amazing. like looks like the athletes have got a beautiful day out there and yeah. great current it's gonna be some nice wind yeah. so yeah if you could summon up the last 20 years in like a minute and a half <laughs> what came to your mind um you just you just gotta love it man you know love love the process of being in the ocean and the type of people that you get to train mm -hmm. with and hang out with you know it's a lifestyle right and um the people that you surround yourself with and uh so for me you know like i started doing this race over 20 years ago and now i live in hawaii yeah you know so that's how much it meant to me mm -hmm. you know like i started coming to do the race and now i live here my fa my two daughters were born in hawaii so you know i think that says it all you know so um i've really embraced uh you know the love for the hawaiians and the culture here and just the culture of paddling in the ocean and um it's, it's a beautiful thing all right i already ran into a cool story here and one is for sure everybody is nursing their foils 
we are sanding we are alcohol wiping we are putting wax over the screw holes and we are definitely and most not revealing what is riding in the front I am absolutely this is so cool we have Oscar here and I'm gonna look at this thing it's as shiny as shiny can be look at that so and that thing to an inch of its life yes so a 2,000 3,000 3,000 okay oh yeah and then alcohol wipe alcohol wipe and then cover the screw holes up get some wax in there right, yeah. and streamline that out absolutely zero nothing no drag at all because out there every second counts exactly every little gain you can get counts yeah. so i'll do whatever it takes so so it definitely is a little bit of an arms race here if uh, <laughs> or, or, what, what what can we say everyone's doing it yeah so if you want to be competitive sand your mask sand your yeah. wings yeah waxing the screw holes yeah i know it's yeah. everything off there there you have it. Look at this. Look at this. It's <laughs> clean as a whistle. Um, Everybody's nursing their rig here like no tomorrow. Very secretive everything too. The camber line. Keep the backs on. Nobody gets to see what's going on underneath these backs. Uh, prototype for you. Want to see this thing? <laughs> if you want to show it. Oh. First, first peak. There you go. Bro. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Look at bam. this thing. You can peel a tomato with this thing. Holy smokes. <laughs> and the camber line here. I'm already starting to notice a few things here that that thing looks slick. Very exciting stuff. And do, are you also polishing your foil like everybody? Did yeah. you give it a nice little kiss and uh, sang a song tonight, sang a good night song and all of that? Polished it for hours. Poli slept yeah, yeah. with it. I, I slept with it, yeah. Much longer to the start, you guys. And this is gonna be a flat water start. So may the best pumper win. We've talked about it on the beach, we don't know. Uh, the wind are uh, kind of coming a little northerly angle here, but that's also because of the land that is kind of pulling in the wind more. But this is going to be highly, highly interesting with so many subfoilers. This is going to be a whole new content, new data, new experience. different this year because if you want to catch up with the wingers you're gonna have to gun it the subfoil start was super exciting to see all these guys pumping up and then just racing in for such a photo finish here guys but this is the hard part China wall is flat it's offshore wind you can see the guys were pumping as far as they possibly could and in first place right now laying down paddling is Oscar from Australia second place I couldn't make out so this is a very new and exciting and very hard to kind of like gauge what's going to happen here in the last quarter mile yeah wow so this turns into a little bit of a multi-discipline kind of thing because now you're just prone paddling like like the original guys because your last stretch 
is not finishable on foil. All right, we have Olivia Piana rounding the corner here, but China Wall is such a mess, such a backwash here. And uh, sadly, she came off a of foil and we're gonna follow and hopefully she can save her lead into the finish line. But it's really tough as we just seen earlier, Oscar leading and then getting passed by James Casey, just by pumping uh, on foil, just by staying up longer. And we'll see if Olivia's gonna suffer the same fate just further out. Uh, so poor Olivia, she's paddling through the messy backwash, getting passed by Annie, still on flight. What a bummer, but Annie coming down a foil pretty soon to inside the surf spot there, paddling, but Olivia is not giving up. She has the bigger board and she's SUP paddling now, the traditional way, trying to catch a wave there, but just not able to materialize, but she is on Annie's heels because now it all comes down who got the longer and better board. And as you can see, they are super close to each other and Olivia ended up taking their win actually in this oh so nail biting finish here on the oh, Bimmons yeah, side. Yeah, it was a tricky race. It was so heartbreaking because I was just like so uh, close, but I mean, it was a yeah. very fair, well run race by her. So. I was waiting for, for her, I was like, she will arrive <laughs> and then she, <laughs> she catch me. She did, she did very well actually. She really take a super small swell uh, near, the, near the wall. And yeah, I knew that I, I that I had a longer board than her on this race, and then I started just paddling back to surprising. Yeah. 